Hey, Denelton High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is AP Physics, the uh, exam review for electricity and magnetism. So uh, let's get to it. Our, our electricity and magnetism chapters uh, start with electrostatics. And electrostatics, you can break down into four different sections the electric force, the electric field strength, the electric potential energy, and electric potential. So let's start with electric force. And, uh, and one thing you got to notice in all of these problems, if you're dealing with points in space, you're going to be dealing with this, these KQQ equations, okay? And if you're talking about electric force specifically, to find the magnitude or the number in newtons, the electric force is equal to KQQ times R squared. And that K is, of course, that 9 times 10 to the 9th number. And when we want to know the direction, because force is a vector quantity, we have a magnitude and direction. The direction comes from the charges. Do not put positives and negatives in your equation. The positives and negatives just tell you direction. And so opposite charges, like uh, positives and negatives, they attract each other. Like charges repel. And the big thing you got to keep in mind with these type problems is take one at a time. Don't try and do everything at once. If you see, take a look at this problem, and let's say our negative Q is our frame of reference, and we want to find his electric force. Now, the negative Q will feel an attractive force with the, the one up top. And again, I'm taking one at a time. The negative Q will also feel an attractive force towards the Q that's on the bottom because the opposite charges are going to attract. Now, if you see, what's going to cancel out is your Y vectors of each of these are going to cancel out because one's going up, one's going down, which means your ultimate net force is going to be going in this direction, isn't it? And it's going to be doubly as big, okay? And so, if you remember what we do with this, we're going to have the net force is going to be K times 2 QQ, that's Q squared, over that hi the hypotenuse for each one, which was the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And remember, we can multiply by the whatever trigonomic function, and the trigonomic function, the ratio comes out to be x, which is on the x-axis, over x squared plus y squared, which is our hypotenuse right there. So that's electric force. Let's come over to electric field strength. Electric field strength is also a vector quantity, and so electric field strength is equal to kq over r squared. Now, electric field strength doesn't matter whether there's a charge there. It can just be some random point in space. If there is a charge, you can do the force that that charge is feeling over the Q of that charge. And that's for the magnitude alone. And remember, the units for electric field strength is newtons per coulomb. Okay? The direction, though, again, don't put positives and negatives in your equation. The direction, it's always out of the positive and always into the negative. And again, you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to take one at a time. Take a look at this problem. And you can see it's coming out of the positive and it's going into the negative. It's going out of the positive and into the negative. And you can tell this positive charge is going to be even greater because there's more vectors coming out of that positive than there is going into the negative. Let's take a look at this one. You can see how there, we have these voids where the electric field strength is equal to zero in these points in between. And that's because they're all the same charge. They're all positive charges, aren't they? And so if you think about it, that the middle one's going to be greater positive charge than the two on the, the one on the left and the one on the right because there's again more vectors coming from it but we always go out of the positive and into the negative negative. and again just like with force do one at a time just do one point at a time all right and as we know as we get further away the electric field strength goes down and down now if you're ever trying to find out where the electric field strength is equal to zero set your E's equal to each other have E1 equal to E2, which means one side's going to be Q over R squared, and the other side's going to be Q over R squared. That's electric field strength. Let's go to electric potential energy. For electric potential energy, we have potential energy is equal to Q times V, Q times the voltage or the potential. And it's also equal to K, the sum of QQ over R squared, and these are scalar, which means, guys, positives and negatives, just plug it right into the equation.
So if you have a positive and you have a negative, plug it in for into your Qs there. All right, and this is we're going to use these guys anytime anytime we're trying to find stopping potential that's voltage or accelerating voltage that's voltage as well. And in, in that we're going to use potential equals kinetic. QV is equal to one half mv squared, and that's either to get a charge going or to stop a charge. A lot of times that shows up in both magnetism or atomic physics. Let's come over to electric potential. Electric potential is scalar as well, and that's where V equals ED. Victor has erectile dysfunction if you want to memorize it very easily. Um, it also equals K, the sum of Q over R. And again, plug those positives and negatives in, and you're just going to be adding up. That's all you got to do is add these guys up. Do the sum of. It's no problem at all. And remember, a lot of times they can use this when they ask where find a point in between the charges where the voltage is equal to zero. And so what you're going to do is set one voltage equal to another voltage. Set one Q over R equal to another Q over R. And make an equality with the R's. And you can see one is R1 away from the Q1, and the other one is 0.2 minus R1, which would give you your R2 right there. Remember, if we're going to bring any kind of charge into this place where the voltage is equal to zero, of course, the work or the energy is equal to zero joules. It doesn't take any energy at all in order to do this. And that's our electrostatics. Let's uh, move to uh, our, our circuits and, and capacitors and wires type chapter. And if we think about capacitors, just think about your keyboard, okay? When you type something on a keyboard, we're going to use this equation right here. It, it has a capacitance for electrical charge. And that equals this epsilon. This epsilon is, is kind of a, a constant that we have here. And then it takes the area over the little distance. So the greater the area of your plates, the more charge you can hold. The smaller the distance between the plates, the more charge you can hold. And that comes back to Q is equal to VC. Q is equal to VC. Uh, just think about the, the channel if you want to memorize that equation. Q equals VC. And we do have a potential energy type equation for capacitance, and that is one half QV or one half CV squared. That's on your that's on your equation sheet, okay? Um, and if you ever want to know the electric field lines or the electric field strength, you can go back to those equations, and of course they go out of the positive and into the negative. Every wire will have a resistance, and that resistance is equal to it's the material it's made out of, of course, copper wire would be, would be have the least resistance of anything. Um, something that would have a greater resistance would be something like a, a rubberized type thing. Times the length over the area. The greater the length, the more resistance it flows. That f the resistance to flow charge. The greater the area, the less resistance there is. Okay, and. Of course, I, which is current, is equal to charge coulombs over time, and times always in seconds. And of course, this all comes back to Ohm's law: V equals IR and P equals IV. And that brings us into circuits. Um, this is kind of our second part of electricity and magnetism. Our first was electrostatics. Our second is circuits, and we have to know what's the same on series circuits. And what stays the same on a series is current stays the same. What stays the same on parallel is voltage stays the same on parallel. So the equations we have for series is going to be, we just add up our resistances in series to get the equivalent resistance. In parallel it's going to be 1 over or the inverse in order to find the the equivalent resistance. Now guys, it is the exact opposite for capacitors. So just keep that in mind, the exact opposite for capacitors here. Now if you ever have a capacitor in your circuits problem, just ignore it and do your circuits problem the exact same way and then just look for the voltage of whatever is running parallel with the capacitor and that would be the capacitor's voltage okay because as we know voltage stays the same in parallel now if we want to find the the voltage across bulb c we would we want to put a voltmeter in parallel with it because voltage stays the same if we want to find the the current across bulb b we're going to put an ammeter right there right in series because what stays the same in series is current and remember in any one of our circuits problems what do we want to do we want to break it down break it down into the simplest things possible so as we as we do 
we have parallel for bulb B and bulb C. We're going to combine those together, and it's going to be 1.5 ohms because what happened? The volt the voltage gets dropped. The the resistance gets less. And then if you see now bulb A and the 1.5 ohms are in series together, so we're going to combine those together to make one. And the equivalent resistance of this entire circuit is 4.5 ohms. And that is getting 9 volts, which means that we have 2 amps running through here. So what do we want to do? Use Ohm's law to build it back up. What stays the same in a series? Our current stays the same. So bulb A is going to be getting 2 amps, isn't he? So is the 1.5 ohms going to get, be getting 2 amps. And then we can build it back up and, of course, use V equals IR every single time. Anytime we want to find out the brightness, which one is brighter than the other, go to power. Go to power. P equals IV. So for circuits, break it down, build it back up. Let's move on to magnetism here. A magnetism problem is when we have a charge that's moving at some velocity and it's going into a magnetic field. And we're going to use three main equations. Three main equations. Our first equation is going to be where we are trying to get our charge to accelerate. And that's our accelerating voltage. That goes back to electrostatics. Potential is equal to kinetic. QV is equal to one half mv squared. So a lot of times we start with this or we end with the accelerating voltage. And after we find the accelerating voltage or the velocity of this, we want to find out what happens to this positive charge as it enters into the magnetic field. And so when it enters into the magnetic field, we know it's going to have some circular motion. Okay, circular motion. And we're going to have Yoda demonstrate um, our right hand rules. Now, of course, he only has two fingers and a thumb, but we're going to just assume that there are enough um, fingers to do the job. Your fingers, your four fingers, are going to point in the direction of the magnetic field, which is into the page or into the computer screen. Next, your thumb is going to point in the direction of the velocity of the charge into the current, okay? And so you're going to have your fingers going into the page. You're going to have your thumb going to the right. And you can see the palm of your hand is going to show the force, the magnetic force. May the f magnetic force be with you, as Yoda would say. And the positive charge is going to show where the positive force is. Of course, if it's a negative charge, the back of the hand is going to show you where the force is. So if our, your fingers are going into the page, your thumb is going to the right, your palm is pointing up. So it will show a centripetal motion towards the top. Okay, And so we're going to have FB is equal to FC. Our magnetic force is going to be equal and opposite to our centripetal force. QVB equals MV squared over R. And the circular motion, what we have to remember is the centripetal force or the magnetic force is always towards the center and constant. So is the acceleration. But the velocity is always going to be tangent to the curve and constant. So we're going to have centripetal motion at some radius here. Now the last thing we might want to do is to make this charge go straight through this magnetic field. So what do we need to do to make it go straight? We need an electric force. We need to put, of course, something to make it a repulsive force with this positive charge. So we're going to put positive plates on the top, negative plate on the bottom, out of the positive into the negative shows our E, our electric field lines, and our FB is equal to our FE. They're equal and opposite. QVB is equal to QE. Now something to keep in mind is if our velocity is greater than expected, it's going to be going upwards. It's going to feel force up. If the velocity is less, now the electric field strength is winning out, and it's going to push it down. And that's magnetism. Three equations what you have to know for magnetism. It's really easy. Our last but not least is electromagnetic induction, is when we're inducing a current. Inducing a current. And there's a couple different ways to induce a current. But in any case, we're going to be looking at our magnetic flux. Okay, And flux is equal to B times A times cosine of theta. You can change the B, the magnetic field strength. You can change the area by moving it in or out of the magnetic field, and, and or you could rotate it at angles. Now, if you're going to rotate this coil in a magnetic field, every one full rotation changes the direction of the current four times. Okay, Every one full rotation changes it four times. But in this case, we have a coil going into a magnetic field that's pointing in, into the page or into your computer screen. 
and as we see as it moves in the area is going up isn't it so as the magnetic flux increases the coil will induce a current to decrease this magnetic flux change it's going to compensate for that change now that little sentence I have right there is something that you want to be able to write clearly and concisely on the AP exam as the flux increases the coil induces a current to decrease the flux change and so what we're going to do here is we're going to use a different right hand rule as this cart goes into this magnetic field we're going to use our right hand rule and our in it the magnetic field is pointing into the page so I want to point my thumb out of the page towards myself okay and so because I want to decrease that magnetic field okay and my fingers will curl in a counterclockwise fashion now I spelled counter wrong but that's okay it's still gonna go in a counterclockwise fashion and so the um, as it goes out of the magnetic field it's going to go the exact opposite way because in that case the flux will be decreasing and we want to increase it by pointing our thumb into the page it will then go clockwise clockwise and we have a simple equation that EMF is equal to the change in flux over the change in time and it's also equal to BLV now guys it's not the full length of the wire it's just that length L the one that's perpendicular because see the W the W will have an induced current going in different directions which means it's going to cancel each other out we only use the L for BLV this vertical or perpendicular length and that EMF is the same as voltage so you can also use V equals IR okay now we have one last thing with this is where we have wires that are running parallel okay and if they're running in the same direction you can see that they have an attractive force and at point P which is right in the middle if you use your right hand rule and you grab with your thumb pointing in the direction of the, of the current you can figure out where your magnetic field is going in ones that are running parallel in the same direction the net force the net magnetic field is zero Teslas if they're running opposite there's a repulsive force and it's just like if two people walk in the same direction they're obviously attracted to each other if they're walking in opposite directions they're obviously repulsive to each other so think of two people walking but the magnetic field for the second one is maximum at point P maximum and there's a nice simple equation that we use is FB equals BIL and that B is equal to this uh, u naught i over 2 pi r okay and you can see if you grab that top wire that top to the left wire and I've showed where my fingers my fingers are going to be coming um, out on the top and in at the bottom and that's your magnetic field now you see this coil that I have if the coil is running the same direction which is uh, parallel it's not going to induce any current I have to either pull that coil in or pull that coil out in order to induce a current and so that covers about everything that covers electrostatics that covers circuits that covers magnetism and induction and those are the four main types of problems for electricity and magnetism hope it helped this is Mr. Aiden signing off bye